such as things like the religion I was growing up in, raised in, and... Which religion? Uh, Christianity. I which, was raised a Christian. Which version of Christianity? Because um, you got Baptist, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalian. We had an apost apostolic person here, Catholic, Jewish, or, like, or <laughs> you mind telling me? The flavor? Um, no, I came from Michigan. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, so what this is is basically a talk about whatever you want. Okay. We think face-to-face -face conversation is going kind of out of style. Yeah. And we want to show you can gently challenge and have like a really good conversation in a short time frame. I'm not here to waste your time. Okay. But it doesn't have to be an argument or debate. And I'm not here to argue and debate with you. Cool. We have some topics set up already. Did you have like a, or you can make up one if you want to. Or okay. did you have one in mind? Like for example, we have politics. Is U.S. a Christian nation? Should the Second Amendment be repealed? Should the this age to vote be lowered? Podcast, right? We're streaming live on Twitch. Oh, cool. Yeah? Nice. By the way, can we record you? I'm sorry. We're doing so out of order. Sure. Yeah. Is it cool? Yeah. Did you have one that you wanted to talk about? Yeah. But can you also like send me the Twitch link? Hell yeah, we can. Awesome. Go for it. That's Cordial Curiosity. That's cool. this guy right here. Nice, cool. Very nice. cool. So, uh, um, do any of these interest you, or would you like to? Like, how about like uh, taxation or like communism? Is it unethical to be a billionaire? If, taxation or communism? If you want to talk about that, you just bring yeah, up the topic. Yeah, like taxation. Yeah. What is it that? So well, like claim? the amount of taxation, like whether or not somebody should be taxed more based on their success in life. Based off of income. Based ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So should we should we tax higher for people who make more money? Yeah. No or yes? No. No. Can I see how strong of a no? Oh, is it no. like no? Oh, I'm sorry. Should, um, let's say no is like absolutely not no. No, no, yeah. no, no way. I'm not even considering anything else. This is yes, they should, absolutely should. So Power, I'm I'd super hardcore, like, yes. If somebody makes, like, say, like, $20,000 or less a yeah. year, then I'd say, like, maybe they should possibly be, like, taxed a little bit less, but that they still should have to contribute something. Yeah. Okay, yes. But if you make $40 billion a year, yeah, same tax at basically the same rate? I think it should be flat tax, yeah. Flat tax. Except for maybe, like, say, $20,000 or less a year. Uh, $20,000 or less, we're not going to... We will contribute maybe in other meaningful ways. Maybe yeah. in money, if, if it needs to be money. Yeah. But if you can say how it was a vet. Or maybe, like, volunteering. Like, Volunteer maybe if there's, like, volunteering that they do to contribute to society. Community hours yeah. of some sort. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Or, like, um, you work in a nursing home and you contribute additional hours of work. Yeah because you know you don't necessarily work on the clock if you have people sick all around you, or if you're a vet. Totally. Or if you're a teacher and you're like grading papers at home or something like that, we'll adjust your, the amount of tax. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I think that'd be a short conversation. <laughs> yeah, it would be. <laughs> I think that's very reasonable. Is, not, is that not close to what we're doing right now? I'd say it's not really because there's just the tax code is so complicated that it's really difficult to understand it unless if you're either really educated in it sure. or if you have a lot of money to spend on people to do the research. Right. So if you have the money, then you can go and like find tax loopholes potentially or things such as that nature. But then if you're middle class, say, like the middle class has the most burden out of all the Americans. Right. Because there, it's like a, you get help and benefit yeah, from the government. And exactly. then at the other one, it's like you can afford no matter what it is. So like you have this hill of middle class people that get the brunt. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. Because with like the middle class, nobody wants to tax the poor because they know that the poor can't afford it. Right. With the wealthy, the wealthy are lobbying. So they already have the politicians in their pockets. Right. The middle class, they're so busy working usually that they don't have the time. And if they did, they wouldn't be able to fund the politicians to the extent that the wealthy mm. can. We're, we're seeing eye to eye on this. But also, if you're very poor and you're trying to escape poverty, one of the, one of the walls you run into is hitting that tax middle class barrier where it's like, I'm working hard to like build a community, build a company, generate some revenue, build up my stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm, I get no support and I'm being hit by 
finances left and right, and I got to pay health care for this guy, this guy. It's like I can't afford this. It was better off being poor on a financial level. I see what you're saying. Than trying yeah. to make and something with myself. That's the problem that I found with Flint. I go to college in Flint, and the problem with Flint is that these people are offered all these. Everybody in Flint is offered all these campaign promises of, oh, we'll make Flint so much better, and. Everybody, so many people end up dependent on the government, on the system. And the thing that's cool though about Flint is that there's kind of this counter culture. What are you saying, Front? Flint. Flint. What yeah. is Flint? Can you describe Flint, that? Flint, Michigan. The thing about Flint? Yeah, Flint, Michigan. You're from Michigan though. Yeah, I'm from Michigan. You're not from literally Flint, Michigan though, right? No. Okay, okay. No. All right. So this is like a local politics thing. Yeah. Rock me with it. Rock me so with it. the thing with Flint, Michigan, is they go and the candidates promise so much, and then there's all this corruption that happens, mm. and they become dependent upon the system. All the while, there's kind of this encouragement, I'd say, to be content with where you're at, regardless of your life situation. So. I see. I really strongly believe in achievement that people should strive to gain the knowledge that they can to try to get a decent living, you know, while striving for more achievement and actually make, like, just strive for their greatest potential in life. Because if somebody's, like, say, like, doing a nine to five regular job, sure, it's decent, nice. it contributes to the economy. Yeah. But let's say this guy really wants to create this amazing, new technology, you know, I believe that he should go for it. Yeah. And there's some venture capital groups in Flint, Michigan, which actually help with that, which I think is really amazing because entrepreneurialism is really increasing in Flint and it's helping Flint immensely increase right. its wealth. Sounds like there's a moral prerogative towards helping people who need it and are willing to work. Yes. Sounds like your your perspective is overall very moral in the in the first place. Like this benefits people yes. if we behave this way. Where do you get morals from? So I'd say it's probably from my upbringing. Nice. But also from such as things like the religion I was growing up in, raised in, and which religion? Uh, Christianity. I which, was raised a Christian. Which version of Christianity? Because um, you got Baptist, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalian. We had an apost apostolic person here, Catholic, Jewish, or like, or, <laughs> you mind telling me, the flavor? Um, it's a less common denomination. Talk to me, but, I love, um, I love this. I was raised a Latter-day Saint. And That's not uncommon. Not everybody believes it to be Christianity, but yeah. they teach family values. Don't worry about that. And I strongly believe in family values and that Families don't always work up to standard to family values. That's reality. Mm. But I think it's something that society should strive for. Mm. You know, like you don't want to be in an abusive relationship. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Because if you have like kids, you know, it'll go and negatively impact the kids too. Right. But I strongly believe that the American dream, most people want to, even socialists, it's just that they don't always necessarily have the willpower and the determination and the ambition. Cool. to go for that. So are you an elder? Are you too old to be an elder? Like, or have you gone on a mission yet? Oh, um, I went and I became a priest and I got my patriarchal How blessing. How old are you? I'm 21. Oh, okay. And I decided not to go on a mission <laughs> because nice. I like some aspects of the Latter-day Saints, sure. but I'm more of a non-denominational Christian lady. You're more of a non-denominational and like, in your principles and in practice, maybe? Yeah, in practice, yeah. But you were raised yeah. LDS, right? Exactly. That's cool. What, but you still have the same morals or like you develop the same morals? Um, yes, I'd say yeah. so. Yeah, and you- At its core, I believe in different things um, with like, in regard to its actual application, mm. like with specific small things, I believe differently, but at its core, the core values I believe in are same. What's like the major core Just major like core with value. like Catholicism, you know. What's like the major core value that you think is applicable? Well, I believe that people should strive for protecting innocent people's lives and that also compassion should be practiced hmm. with the less fortunate especially 
and that philanthropy can especially help rise and raise a nation's economy and help people completely. Can I throw something out? Sure. I'm just picking a little bit, so don't take this the wrong way. But could it be seen that taxes, in a way, do that? And that if, if we really cared about being as compassionate as possible, and I'm not saying this is my point of view, but, okay. but people who have the ability to give more without harming their lifestyle ought to be able to do that compared to someone who's not in that position. Like, going with the core philosophies and morals that you presented, wouldn't a elevated tax bracket system support that point of view? I see what you're saying, but the problem with having these multiple tax brackets is it disencourages achievement because if somebody says, like, I'm not definite about the tax brackets completely, but let's say that at $50,000 a year, you get taxed at 25%. Okay. And let's say at $52,000 a year. It's like 75. You make, something crazy. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. So like, if you do that, it'll discourage them to do that. I agree. And they'll work around that tax law. I agree. So a lot of things that... Is that based on the impression that you have, this feeling? Or if it turned out to be, to be the case that the more you make, the slighter the increase it actually is? So I'm that not, in that you're actually making more money. I'm not definite about that because I haven't really lived long enough to actually be it's true. Yeah, true. Known well about the brackets. Let's say I'm not saying it's the case now, but if you learn in the future, say tomorrow or next week, that it was more exponentially tapering off, so that yeah. the more money you make, yeah, you're getting taxed more, but it's not as if you're losing more money. It's like you still walk home with the bulk, a greater yeah. bulk. With that make you more inclined to say that a bracketed tax system is not as bad as you had thought originally? I would say that it would be kind of unethical to do that, but I also think that the more brackets you have, the more complicated it makes, and it disencourages somebody to strive to their ultimate potential in life, whatever their individual goals in life might be. So if somebody has like say $100,000 a year, you know, and somebody like makes $50,000 a year. Mm. I strongly believe that they should be allowed to go for their highest amount of achievement, um, not just financially, but also definitely knowledge-wise, striving to gain more knowledge and skills and strive to be as best as they can be. But at the same time, the problem with the brackets is that you look at CEOs and a lot of them go and get a substantial amount of their monetary compensation in stock. And that's because instead of having to pay that extremely high percentage, it stays in a portfolio. they go and they wait until they cash out some of those sure. stock shares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, here's something I'm throwing out. If, if the bracket could be made in a way that it's not discouraging for people to become more successful, would that be an improvement? Um, I would say so, yes, but as long as it's simple enough that and the average enough. taxpayer can understand it. So then we have a perfect criteria then, because now we know like tax system needs work. Yes. It currently seems convoluted to the point where it's really hard to understand. Yes. And it seems to actively discourage progress up the brackets. If you made it clear, if you made it more clear, just simplify it, and made it not seem as discouraging, yeah. you'd be for it. Totally, and, then it'll, yeah. and then it'll fit all the morals that you've been ingrained with. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nathan, I feel like that was pretty good. My friend Reed's right over here. Um, I had a really fun talk with you. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you so much. Cool. Yeah, no problem. Are you enjoying your time here? What yeah. Do you, what do you plan on looking at? It was fun. Um, I plan on checking out everything. <laughs> as much as I can. <laughs> okay. Uh, Reed.